that was an exciting entrance to the video today. <laughs> uh, the topic is kind of, you know, blasé, so I tried to jazz it up a little bit. The big problem I have with bathrooms in general, in every house I've ever owned, the towel bars don't seem to want to stay nailed to the wall. And sometimes I've purchased a home and the towel bar has already been ripped out several times. This one, uh, this house here, same thing. The towel bars have been pulled out of the wall a few, a few too many times. And I could get into a long spiel about manufacturing and how the wall should have been done in the first place where a towel bar could be located to a two by six uh, framed in or something behind the plaster. The walls, uh, drywall just doesn't hold. You know, drywall doesn't hold. So you put screws in drywall, anchors, uh, T bolts, you name it, it doesn't really work. And uh, if you're lucky, the towel bar stays nailed up for a long time. So uh, today, that's what we're going to approach as a problem. And I'm going to show you what I did to hopefully will alleviate the problem. And today, I'm going to show you how I tackled this one. It was done on a budget again, so there was no money to spend on this, this deal, so that's part of the problem behind it. I have textured walls, and in order to do textured walls, I need, well, it would take a lot of plaster work. So, let's get around the problem, and let's solve the problem. Let's see those towel bar problems. Okay, this is... This is a classic right here. Uh, this towel bar has been installed uh, three, four, maybe uh, maybe more uh, times and has continued to rip the plaster and break over and over again. And uh, the other one shows, again, the same thing. We These are actually a plastic anchor that you drive a screw into. And the same thing, it has broken over and over again. And this is getting kind of old. This is a textured, it's painted. You know, there's just no cheap fix to this. Or is there? Well, I'm going to show you a cheap fix today. I uh, was out in the shop and I made this. And the reason I did this was because there are studs in the wall, like any home. But the studs are on 16 inch center. So that means I'm going to have to have a screw here and a screw here in order to hold this to the wall. But it'll hold strong because it'll be into the stud. And then I can nail my towel bar up. I'm also going to do a seal around this so that it's tight to the wall and will look good hopefully for years to come. And we made this up in the shop uh, yesterday. So I'll show you how it what it takes to build one of these. So with a project like that, the first thing we're going to have to do is run over to Lowe's or Home Depot, but we're going to buy clear, in this case I'm just going to buy a piece of clear pine. It's going to cost about $8 for a board, uh, depending on the length you buy. I bought a long enough length I could cut two of those because I'm going to match up the towel bars as I showed you on the wall. So, I want to show you a couple things that will save you some headache, hopefully in the future. Uh, I've got one made here, uh, besides the one you saw, and there's a mistake. So, I want to show you the mistake that I made so you don't make that mistake. <laughs> This is a nice piece of clear lumber from Lowe's, and it's uh, one by four, and I think they call it grade A or something like that. It's, it's clear, there's no knots in it, and that's pretty good. Sometimes you're gonna find some little defective deficiencies or something in the lumber, and I'll use some wood filler. I don't have a specific wood filler that I like, so I just use whatever's on hand. But one of the things we're going to do is I'm going to cut this down. Now, this particular project calls for a 30 inch plank. So I'm going to cut this with the uh, chop saw first on one end a little bit, just to square it up, run up my 30 inches, and then cut with my chop saw again, or my miter saw, whatever. And that way we have a 30 inch plank. But here's what to look for. Okay, here's a, here's a defective one that I had made the other day that uh, I had to scrap it because it was made wrong. And what happened was, you know, have a pencil in your hand, and what you're looking for is after you get this piece cut and you're ready to, you know, router and, and do all the other little funky stuff with it, you want to take a look at the, the board on a flat surface somewhere and see exactly, you know, which way she's curved. She's going to be curved. There's going to be a little bit of curve. It'll be very, very slight in some cases. In other cases, it'll be really, you know, it'll be bowed, you know, like this kind of thing. 
And what you're looking for is something bowed like this because when you pull it down with the screws, it's gonna pull it flat and it'll stay flat for years to come. If you do it this way and then put screws in it, the ends will always be hanging out. This is what the difference is between, you know, cabinet maker, carpenter, framers, whatever. They know these tricks. They look that are that they're wood and they read those curves to figure out when they nail in, is it gonna nail in this way or am I gonna end up like this where I can't nail it in properly because the board's not gonna flatten out for me when I nail it up. So that was one of the mistakes I made because normally with a curve, what you do is you'd write, write something like the back or the rear, uh, the wall mount, whatever, on the back side with a pencil or something once you've figured it out. Before you go to the router or painting or getting anything else done, you wanna kinda of do that because in this case, what happened was the board is actually, and again, you can't see it well, but it's actually curved this way, which isn't any good to me because when I nail it on this side like this, I'm still gonna have, you know, the ends are gonna be spaced up like this kind of thing. And that's something, you uh, again, you wanna read your lumber before you get this far. Uh, what happened with me is I didn't pencil it. I didn't write, this is the back. So router this side. Well, no, I just threw it in the router, went ahead and routered, and then realized afterwards, painting and everything, I was like, wait a minute, uh, the curve, the warp on this thing is the wrong way. It, this should have been the top, and this should have been the bottom. Or, you know, like I said, mark it with a pencil. Then it won't happen, you know? <laughs> and the other thing uh, to do is it may not look like it, but sand your, these are end grains here. There's an end grain here. So another problem that we face with lumber. So you wanna sand this really nicely. Even if it looks great from the saw, it's not. Sand it with a very light uh, sandpaper, like a, a 180, 200, 220, 240, somewhere in that range. And just make sure you sand it. Because when you paint it, that end grain is gonna suck up the paint and it's gonna look nasty. And you're gonna be painting over and over again, trying to cover the end grain when all you do is a little bit of sanding will give it a nice smooth finish and then the paint will be well able to cover the ends really nicely and give you a nice finish this is a little bit unfinished and i don't know i'll just show it to you a little bit but you can probably see the end grain in there a little bit and you can because it kept sucking up i did not sand this enough and at that point it didn't really matter because this whole piece was no longer usable this will go to the scrap pile and then i'll reuse the plank for something else in the future that I wanted to hopefully save you guys the, the headache. What, you, what I'm looking for is to curve this way with the lumber so that when the two screws pull it down, the ends will be tight to the wall. That's the secret to maybe a carpenter or a good craftsman. <laughs> so just save you guys some headache. Okay, let's go to the router. We're on it. Done deal. Okay, well, let's move on. Oh yes, the the part that every woodworker, the part that every woodworker just loves, sanding. But if we're proud of our work, I guess we have to do it. So, I forgot to uh, film the part where I show myself painting this thing, so I'll just reenact it, I guess. Yeah, how's that? <laughs> this is going to be a case of uh, I've already sort of pre measured everything up. So uh, we're at three inches from the top here, and we're going to rub roughly fit this end. Yeah. Now, this other end is going to be kind of a relative to. Uh, there we go. So theoretically, I'm going to put the first screw in. Then I'm going to check level, and then the other screw will go in. Hopefully that's the idea anyways. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, there's 
there's the finished product. Thank you for watching Coffee and Tools as always. And it looks like we can pretty much, uh, we can probably, if we're falling in the bathtub here, we can probably grab that rail. We'll be just fine. We won't tear it off the wall. You know, I think it came out all right. I'm actually going to be doing both of them uh, as a pair. But uh, with the white in here, I, I think it looks pretty good.